Today we take a look at some tragic cases of corrupt cops. Feel free to share your thoughts on each case in the comments. On December 31st, 2022, the Jackson Police Department responded to complaints from a hotel about a male subject harassing people in the parking lot. Officer Kenya McCarty arrived first, locating the subject, 41-year-old Keith Muriel. Body camera footage captured the encounter, with Officer Avery Willis joining shortly after. Did he actually leave? Did he ask you to leave? He did? He did? Can you understand me? Okay. One sec. Hey, hey, love. Is that him? Is this him? Okay. Can you understand me? That, that, that's fine, love. Can you understand me? Okay. So. Hey, I knew you was coming. Leave. I'm not going to ask again. I catch you back up here. We're going to have a problem. Let's go. We're going to walk off. We ain't doing nothing. We're doing our job, man. Go on. I don't, care. I, I don't doing care about the looking. I don't care about the looking. Let's go. Well, no, Okay, and then when one of them shoots your ass, don't yeah. say nothing. Hey, we didn't tell you to stop walking. Let's go, boss. Go ahead, walk to the car now. Ask you nicely, man. What's wrong? Are you okay? Are you scared? Do you stay here? He's asking you to leave. He's security of the property. If you don't leave, you're going to be arrested for trespassing. Either or. It's up to you. But I'm not going to keep repeating myself when I keep asking you to leave. Go. The reason why I'm asking is everything okay is because I keep asking you and I don't do that throughout the week. We don't repeat ourselves too often. So the reason why I'm asking is everything okay because you're looking at me kind of funny. Like, like you got a little smirk on your face, whatever. I'm not doing all that. I try to ask are you okay because if you need help, we can do that for you. But if not, you need to leave per their request. Is there a problem? Okay, can you leave for me? Officer McCarty approached Mr. Muriel aggressively, mocking and threatening him without provocation. Despite Mr. Muriel initially walking away peacefully, Officer McCarty escalated the situation by brandishing her taser when he returned to the hotel entrance. Officer Willis also unnecessarily pushed Mr. Muriel away. You don't gotta, you, hey, say boss, wrong move, wrong move, let's go, let's go, I said go, I said go. What the hell is wrong with you walking up? No, no, no baby, no, it's New Year's. Don't, don't do that. New Year's. Hey, nah, nah, you go get out my parking lot. I want you in the street. Let's go. They ain't have to ask you that many times. Boss, I'm telling you, man, let's go. Nobody can do nothing, man. Walk. I'm telling you. Stop one more time, put you on your ass, man. I promise. Come on, keep it going. Let's go in the street. Keep it going. Keep it going. Wherever you gotta go, go. I'm not. Hey, come back around here. Come back around here. I don't got time. Finna go to jail for public drunk. I'm telling you, that's what's finna happen. Okay. <laughs> Sir. First to last warning, get off the light. First to last warning, get off my light. Let's go. He like, stoop, nah, he, he finna get off my light, take it to the Waffle House. Let's go, I want you out my grass. Hey, they been doing that. They called me and I just came my phone. Bro, while we was out there, I'm talking about, them ain't no fireworks. I, I just in Waffle House parking lot. And he gonna be Clemens' problem. He gonna be Clemens' problem. Yeah, she out there. I seen her car. Don't come back, boss. Officer McCarty repeatedly pointed and activated her taser at Mr. Muriel without cause, also threatening him with arrest for public intoxication despite lacking evidence. This violated police standards and the guidelines outlined by the American Civil Liberties Union. Mr. Muriel, who posed no threat, remained non-confrontational. After he left the hotel property, 
Officers returned to their patrol vehicles and conversed with a witness. Uh -uh. I, don't, I don't know if you did, but yeah, go. Oh my God, he's in front of this. He trying me. I'm finna. What he doing? I'm trying so so hard. You walk up on me two times. I I said no. Hey, what I'm saying? Like, what is your problem? You 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 act like we telling you something wrong. You sitting up here like a. Staring at people, you don't you don't scare the hell you don't scare the hell out that lady. That lady didn't even want to get out of the car with her kids. Huh? That's another one too. She pulled off the left. Oh, I'm 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 I'm. It's just it's too early. It's not even eight o'clock yet, Willis. We, One, one more time, one more time. It, it, his going. I'm sorry. I, I can't be disrespected like that that many times. And he just standing there. Yes. Uh, that's not the way to. Well, we we're we're handling police duty, and we can't move our vehicles, ma'am. So you're gonna have to wait. Baby, yes, you gotta sit there and wait unless you want to get in these patrol cars. No, you, you good, love, you good. You, you safe. You good. Yes, ma'am. That, that, that ain't a smart thing to do. I'll talk, talk off to the cops. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in a move. Everybody can go. Disorderly conduct, noise off. Y'all be, better get it. Y'all better get on them laws. They better get on them laws. Man. Look, uh, okay. I think he gone. He gonna come back. He gonna come back. Right, put handcuffs on it. Don't even have to warn him. Hey, give us a call back. Okay, Officer McCarty's ego and hostility seemed fueled by a perceived lack of respect from Mr. Muriel during their initial confrontation, which is unacceptable. As both officers prepared to leave, Mr. Muriel returned and was tackled to the ground. Backup, including Officer James Land, arrived. Officer McCarty once again deployed her taser using it on Mr. Muriel almost 30 times while he was pinned down. Mr. Muriel screamed for help as all three officers essentially tortured him. Charlie 5. Go ahead, Ten, two, three. Oh. Five, go ahead. Ten, twenty three. Give me your left arm. Give me your left arm. Alright. Stay down. Give me your left arm. Stop resisting. Light foot. Give me your right hand. That's the cuff. Alright, relax your right arm. I'll use a baton to okay. pry his arm. He ain't going nowhere. Extend it. Extend it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to grab the cuffs, foot? That makes it easier. Thank you. Grab them up. Nice to miss you. Okay. No, stay. Stay on the ground. Why do y'all bring y'all's PCs closer? After almost five minutes of relentless tasing, the officers finally handcuffed Mr. Muriel. This highlights Officer McCarty's excessive force. Tasers deliver enough voltage to disrupt the nervous system and cause intense pain with just one shock. With Mr. Muriel enduring around 30 shocks, the risk of fatal injuries is concerning. Nonetheless, the officers attempted to secure him in the back of a patrol vehicle. All right, we're about to take, pick you up and put you in the back of this car. Do you understand? Get up. 
Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. All right. Just take off. You got to Get him against the car. At least get him against the car. Big Hey, you know what? Y'all take off. I tried. Come on. Alright, nah, let him. Let's stay on the ground. Let him get it. Cardi. Cardi. In the footage, officers tried to place Mr. Muriel in a patrol vehicle, but he fell to the ground while attempting to walk. Having been repeatedly electrocuted, he was likely paralyzed or severely impaired. However, officers misinterpreted his inability to comply as resistance, which was untrue. None on this side. None on the back pockets. Motherfucker, turn it over. Hey. Y'all got him in the corner? Nope. You don't know. I'm saying, like, check his pocket right there. All right, something in that pocket. Hey, come on now. You want me to go? Come on. You want to keep trying to kick me? Now we get you get up. Get on up in there. Alright, you got him? I know. He's got my pants. Get, get your over here. All right. All right, McCarty. You come inside, grab him. I'll drag his ass in there. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Switch. Babe. Hey, stop. Hey, kick me. Kick me again. Kick me again. Get your Three officers, despite using excessive force by tasing Mr. Muriel 30 times, struggled for over 10 minutes to handcuff him and secure him in the back of a patrol vehicle. Their incompetence and poor handling of the situation were evident as they even resorted to cuffing his legs together, but still failed in their attempts. He's in. Go ahead and right now, hold him still real quick. I'm going to fix that leg situation right now. Hey, now, fix that. I'm going to fix that leg situation right now. Extend his face, so hard. <laughs> Watch, get in, watch it. Go, oh, get in. Sir, here, grab his. You have to grab him by the arm. Grab him right here by, under his arm. Take my shit. Y'all, we. All he's doing is kicking. Sir. <laughs> Let's then grab this other arm up here. Can you get that on? Go on. All right. Hold on. I ain't playing the kicking game. I got you, man. I got you. Go ahead. Put it on. Steady kicking. Sir, stop kicking. I ain't playing that damn yeah, kicking game no more. <laughs> hey, pick up these buddy. Come on, guy. All right, you want to kick me? Yeah, push against me. Come on. Put yourself on him. Come on. Come on. Almost there. Shit. Oh, Look at my 
All right, close it. All right. All right, I got his legs. Go. Close the door. Although Officer McCarty had already intensely gassed Mr. Muriel, he shockingly gassed him again while he was completely immobilized with his hands and legs handcuffed. This action ranks among the most outrageous acts committed by law enforcement officers. Even after this excessive force, the officer still took a considerable amount of time to close the door on Mr. Muriel. All right, one, two, three, move, Lance. Uh, Lance, move. Uh, Lance. Uh, All right, close up. Uh-uh. You're not going. Look. Come on. Fold your legs. Fold your legs, sir. Fold your legs. Come on, sir. Fold your legs for me. Or short sleeve shirt. Maybe a little bit. Yes, please. Mr. Mr. Uh, Key. We got some in the car, baby. Mr. Key, can you please move your head, sir? I'm gonna twist them. <sighs> try to twist, no, twist them sideways and then try to push his head. We got to turn up, listen, we got to twist him sideways, bend his head against this damn thing. Whatever happened after that, that's on him. He's so, he's so big and not wanting to comply. He's not wanting to, he ain't been complying since we've been out here. Land, we, we asked him at least eight times to leave. He came back while we were still here, man. Oh, I wish I had a beanbag shell. I can't risk opening another door because if we turn on the door. Uh, we had to fight, get, we had to put him in my SUV. Okay. That's on him. Keys, baton, water. Keys, mine. Okay, we're finna, we're finna. At this point, Mr. Muriel was shackled in the back of a patrol vehicle, unresponsive due to the excessive force used against him. Despite clear signs of potential medical complications from being repeatedly tased, the officers neglected to call for medics to assess his condition. They left the scene and joked about the situation, even with the arriving sergeant spending considerable time chatting instead of concluding their investigation or seeking medical help for Mr. Muriel. Take this 
yourself. Have the car, and you go get him. And you gonna get him by yourself. We'll take all the handcuffs off, and you put the handcuffs on. He off some. Sorry, he off some. Realistically, he is off some right now because the way he look at you, you can tell like he he just look at you like this, and you'll be talking. He just looking. So we walked them all the way over there to Waffle House in the parking lot, Sergeant. We came back over here, finna get ready to go 10 8. He walks back over here. Security said he done told him at least eight times to stop harassing the people that was parked over here. He kept coming back and forth. Now, when we walked him over here to Waffle House, he came right back over here after we done told him he did not come back over here. And yeah, he got an in state warrant, um, in state pickup only. So I guess they ain't go. So, um, trespassing. This and the rest, side on the officer. Uh-huh. Gonna get married, huh? My damn nigga. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do everything. You're gonna do that. You're gonna do that. That paperwork. Even for a dry store? Uh-huh. And he didn't, and he didn't take, we didn't, he was not given a single drive stone once both, once cuffs were on both wrists. Yeah, he got three cuffs on right now. He got three on. Because he, he, we, we, we couldn't get arms, like, he would extend his arm, but it would be locked out the wrong way, so if we would have forced it, we would have broke his elbow out of place. Which one got for? Probably Sarge. Old people be farting, don't they? It don't say nothing. They just look at all the stuff. You look around. Trying to blame somebody else for nasty. He ain't saying nothing about it. He ain't gonna do that right beside me. He's gonna change subject. Hey, y'all need to go ahead. Hey, oh, God. He's gonna scratch his head. Hold on. Hey, y'all need to go ahead. Look, look. He ain't gonna say he's gonna We're going on, sir. How you doing? Man, look, you told us to stick together. It ain't that. It's just the fact that they're looking at me. I mean, what they think I was calling for extra units for? They heard what? I was still on. I was still on. Uh, you was still on. Still on. Call the cop. As you saw nine six, you cop me. I'm like, bro. I, I was trying to figure out why my radio was so quiet. <laughs> so, so really. So. Why you just say this? Why you just say? He just said. He just said. I'm got you. Nigga, contact uh phone shop line. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, I'm joking. I ain't never got no nigga to contact. No, nah, you finna get one today <laughs> if you was still on car to car. Let me find out New Year's Day. Right, at 2 o'clock, he trying to do something that I'm been doing. I'm be like, nigga, contact. Nigga, contact for Charter 96, uh, uh, Sergeant Reed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time is now. Yeah. It's 2023. This is how you starting up the New Year's This is how you starting up the New Year. Off the land. Yes, sir. I was trying. I was trying to call you to see if you were still at that store. But whenever I didn't answer, I just drove over there, anyways. Um, I, I got what I handled from you. All right. All right. Have a good night. Security. He couldn't get me. When I got here, when I got here, he was like, "Officer, there you go." You just spent a whole lot of oxygen doing some shit. You gonna take it away? Oh, no, no. Make sure my, my SUV locked. You wanna get him out and put him in your SUV? After the, after the you just play get him in, your, in the car? 311 or 81. How old is he? 311 81. You asking me to do math right now. That's I'm actually laying, actually. Okay, good job. 41. It's 2022. About to be 2023. 81 to 22. It's 41 years. He was born in 81. Uh huh. Okay, yeah, never mind. I ain't got time for it. Yeah, 80, 81. 41. 81. 41 years old. He's an old. Just like Sergeant Reed. <sighs> About how much I say he weigh? Too much. Too much. How much? 280 to 300.
about 285. If he's 6'3", then yeah, he he's at least around between two. I'd say at least two. Where was guns when we needed his? <laughs> Day <laughs> man. If he had been a little bit shorter, we didn't need him. I gotta get my clothes off of him. Hey, did any one of y'all get a look at his uh, clothes? I know a gray jacket. What's the pants? Blue jeans. Blue jeans, gray jacket, blue shirt. Wait, did she call me? And then, colorful tennis shoes. And who? And colorful tennis shoes. <laughs> colorful. Charlie. Charlie. Y'all are better off just actually hitting him with the fight, with the prongs to lock his entire body up. Yeah, but then it'd still be kind of hard to put the cuffs on. Hell, I haven't had my hand on his lower. Uh, I was holding. I had. My, I put my hand on. I was having my lower back. I was trying to grab his arm. And I felt that drive stun going to my arm. I felt it when I was holding the handcuffs and I think little, little Miss Thing right here was, was going crazy on me. Man, when I scraped my knee, I got me. I got too many uh, scrapes and scratches on my knee from dealing with her from that. That yeah. works. <laughs> As a result of this incident, Mr. Muriel was tragically declared dead in a local hospital after the officers realized the severity of his medical condition. A lawsuit was filed against the officers by Mr. Muriel's estate, leading to charges against Officer McCarty and Officer Willis for second-degree murder on May 19, 2023. Meanwhile, the third officer, Officer Land, was charged with manslaughter. The lawsuit contends that the officers failed to check on Mr. Muriel's well-being, despite observing his unresponsiveness and need for medical attention. Jackson Mayor Chokwe Antar Lumumba condemned the incident as excessive, disheartening, and tragic. As of the date of this recording, Officer McCarty is out of jail on a $150,000 bond and will enter a not guilty plea while Officer Willis awaits arraignment and Officer Land has been released on a $75,000 bond. On June 16, 2023, Mr. Sean, a respected community auditor, went to the Connecticut State Police Headquarters to assert his First Amendment rights and request documentation regarding a previous altercation involving Sergeant Brian Fahey of the Connecticut Police Department. This incident involved Sergeant Fay assaulting Mr. Sean without any apparent justification. Yeah, I want to speak to Internal Affairs, correct? So, Internal Affairs is just said to people just real quick. Okay. All right, you got you just fill it out. What's the complaint about a uh, trooper or? It's yeah, it's about a trooper. Thank you, sir. Oh, how, you, how you doing, so, Sergeant? You're videotaping me? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. I, am I don't want to talk to you then. If you want to videotape me, then if you want to talk to me like a man, we but, can but, chat. But what, what, about, what about you guys wear body cameras here? What's the difference? I don't have a body camera. I, I understand that. What, can I get your name, Sergeant? Yeah, Brian Fahey. Brian Fahey. Yeah. So I, I, there's, there's what's a what's serious civil rights you? violation okay, going on here. So as I was explaining to you, other trooper, I was yep. record. I was I'm a journalist, independent journalist, working yeah, on a story, okay. and I was gathering content for that story at the Bradley Airport. TSA became concerned about me filming. Okay. Um, a supervisor came over. The first person who was concerned called the supervisor. Supervisor said, "You have every right to film. It's not an issue. I know your rights. You know your rights. Continue what you're doing." One of your troopers 
um, out of Bradley Airport, Trooper. Um, How can I help you today with pistol permits? Can I help you today with pistol permits? Why Why would I? I don't need help with pistol permits. I need help with a civil rights violation, as I just told okay, you, sir. But you can contact our internal affairs department. It's online or there's a phone number. But you're, I'm, you're, but you're, 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 you're a supervisor. I'm a supervisor in charge of special licensing and firearms. So all these people that are in line in 529 gun dealers in the state of Connecticut, that's what we're dealing with. There's an outlet for but you to make your complaint, a, There's sir. a civil rights violation. But there's that, an outlet you for you to make your complaint, and you can make that. We've why, given you why are you guys acting like this? I, I'm trying to make a serious acting civil like rights. What? I don't know what you... I can't help you with your complaint today. But Fantastic. I want to speak with somebody who can help me. Okay, well, then you can call IA, or you can go there, and if they have time to speak to you, they'll speak to you. But you have your outlet. You can go online, and you can get the phone numbers. Yeah. You've given... We're, we get, We want to entertain your complaint through the proper channels. You want to make a complaint? Yeah, which is, through, which is through internal affairs. Yep, the so proper you've been channels. given that. Yep. I will go speak to them All personally. Right, have a great day. You too. Nice Thank talking to you. You as well. I'll be right with you guys. You're all set here? Excuse me? Are you all set here? Well, yeah, there's nothing else obviously you can help me out with at this okay. point. Okay, so you're all set. So you can, you're going to go to IA right now, correct? Yeah, I'll okay. be there. All right. I'm going to be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be going. Okay. So you're going to stand I, here with your cell phone up. I thought, I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should... You should get to work. I, sh I should get to work? Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. We're going to have a problem between you, you and I. We're we gonna do an interference. His body camera's on. His right body in. camera's on. Stop. Uh, he has his body camera. I don't care. Stop. 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 I don't care. Stop. 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 Right? Stop. I'm gonna. This is private property. I'm, gonna, okay? I'm not doing anything. You're not right, going to video get off. me and I'll have an attitude with me. Okay. I'll get but off I'm gonna of tell you what right now, dude. I'm not the one. Okay? I gave you the information you needed, and I gave you your outlet. Right? You were giving your outlet. No, you wanted to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face. Is what you wanted to do. Yes, you do. Take your cell phone and go and make your complaint. Okay. 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 Can I grab no, my cell phone? No, you stay right here. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. All right. Where's your car? Where's your car? Where's your car? I'm going to go, man. I'm going. I'm going. All right, no, but where's your car? I didn't even know where my car is at. You were about to arrest me, man, for real? I, I, I is have your to body camera you. on? Yeah, my body camera is on, buddy. I'm Trooper Costello, 1139. Costello. Yep. Wow. Listen, with the situation you were going to arrest me for real? We're going to detain you or what the situation was going on, man. <laughs> You I'm leaving. Conversation. I'm leaving. Conversation's over. Go ahead. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Thank you. Sergeant Fay assaulted Mr. Sean for recording an activity protected by the First Amendment, thereby violating his constitutional rights. However, Sergeant Fahey faced no consequences as his department cleared him of any wrongdoing. In 2023, Mr. Sean returned to the same headquarters to submit a FOIA request utilizing his right under the Freedom of Information Act to access information held by government agencies, including police records and body cam footage. Guys, Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today we have returned to the Connecticut State Police Headquarters here in Middletown, Connecticut, or should I say Corrupticut, where I was assaulted by Sergeant Brian Fahey right outside these doors here. Yeah, can I get your name and badge number? Yeah, it's 854. And your name? I'm Trooper Keo. Trooper Keo? Yeah, what do you need? 854? Yeah. No, I don't need anything help with anything, okay. Trooper. Well, what are you it. out here doing? Oh, I'm just taking a walk around, that's okay. all. And why are you recording? Aren't you recording? Yeah, but I have to. Because I choose I'm to. I'm interacting with the public, so I have uh, to be recording. And I choose to because I'm interacting with a law enforcement officer. But you've been recording, we've been having reports of you out here for a while, been recording. Re reports of reports of someone recording Being suspicious walking around because this is a, a building with important people and things in here so are you important because you have a uniform no, I'm on saying not me well who's important that's because inside of this building a crowd of people in there yeah who's important civilians so oh it, here, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be they the are coming here asking why there's this is the connecticut state recording. this is the connecticut state police headquarters correct and they're asking why you're recording we have civilians coming up to me asking why a man is recording they feel uncomfortable civilians are coming up civilians, to you yes. asking why yes i'm recording because yes. it's suspicious yes how is it suspicious because you're recording in a parking lot do you live here are you here for i don't a live in the parking lot no are you here for a reason i am here for a reason what's the reason I don't know if I want to disclose that to you at this point, just because it might compromise what I'm working on here, but what's so suspicious about a man recording? 
you're in a an area that's public, which you you are free to be, but you're reporting and making it look suspicious. So you're you're being a threat to the civilians that are coming up to me and complaining about you. So because I'm let me just get this straight, Trooper. So because I'm recording, I'm a threat to they your to your very important suspe- people that are inside of this you building. Are being suspicious to my civilians that I protect on a daily basis? Yes. I don't think you met the civ- the, the the two civilians that are inside. No, I, think- I have a line of civilians. I have more than twenty people inside of just civilians that I, don't even work for the state. Yeah. They came up to me and said that they feel threat by threatened by you recording because you look suspicious. So you came out here to to do what? To ask you to leave. Why? Because you're making the civilians feel uncomfortable. Let's move out of this woman's way. You're making the, the, the people in this, in this building feel uncomfortable. They are coming here to get their pistol permits or fingerprints, and you're making them feel uncomfortable. By recording? You have, yes. You look suspicious out here reporting, so they're reporting suspicious activity. Okay, and you're responding to that suspicious yes. activity? But I don't Why understand. Why is that a problem? It, I mean, it, I think it's a problem because there's nothing su- suspicious about... It is a man recording in a parking lot. Why are you doing that? I don't think that's suspicious. Yes, it is. On a building that holds a lot of people. Yeah, that's very important very people, suspicious. I know. Very important people Civilians inside. Civilians are important people. You don't think so? I think everybody's important. Exactly. Everybody's important. Exactly. I didn't say anything different. Okay. So, again, this is public. You just said it's public property. Yes, but we can ask you to leave if you're making if you're making people feel uncomfortable and doing suspicious activity. What, what CGS, Connecticut General Statute, is making people feel uncomfortable, Trooper? You're asking me why people are feeling uncomfortable i don't know why they're feeling uncomfortable. no no i don't you're know why okay yeah i don't know no, my 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 question was trooper yeah my, my question was what connecticut general statutes a breach of, peace. a breach of the peace it could be no if we you're wrong to. no you're wrong if we decide to i promise you you're wrong a breach of the peace has to come with an act or a threat of violence and they you should, felt threatened you should and an act or a threat of violence act, trooper or did you say or yeah an act an or a threat of violence this is an act of violence. You are, you are making. It's an act or a threat of violence, you're trooper. You're making people feel uncomfortable because they don't know what you're doing. I can't prove anything right now to you. But there I is no violation of Connecticut general statutes right now. Leave. No, you cannot. Yes, I can. You said this is public property. Yeah, but if you're doing something to disturb people, is that's that, a problem. Or disturb? What? What is? What is the Connecticut general statute for disturb, ma'am? Well, if you know everything, you can tell me, right? There is none. I, I, I for, if for breach of the peace, there sure is. But I just, I just informed you. I just educated you on the fact that it has to come with an the act or a threat. That you might be, ma'am, an act or a threat of think. violence. I can't charge You're you with ignoring. anything until I prove it. But yeah. I can ask you to leave if they are. No, you sleeping. cannot. You I cannot. Have somebody out here for you. Do you want to talk to somebody that's higher? I'm up? talking to you. Yeah, and you, you seem, and you seem, up. and you I'm not charging you with anything, but I'm asking you to Yeah, leave because you so can't, you can man, because respectfully, re- respectfully, I'm not breaking any Connecticut general statute, so you cannot charge me with anything. I'm not charging you, can... you with anything. I okay. didn't say I was. Okay. I never said I was. I know, you said I'm you weren't. I'm asking you to leave. And I'm just I'm telling you that you couldn't. you're making the civilians uncomfortable here. Ma'am, you can ask me to threat. leave. I, I agree. You can ask me, you can ask me to leave, but my response is no. Just minutes into recording the headquarters from outside, Mr. Sean was approached by a trooper who asserted that his actions were suspicious and could be deemed a threat. This assertion was absurd and ran counter to the protections of the First Amendment. According to the American Civil Liberties Union of Connecticut, individuals have the explicit right to capture any image that is in plain view when in outdoor public spaces where they are lawfully present. This includes pictures and videos of federal buildings, transportation facilities, and police officers. Additionally, it is emphasized that the police should not instruct individuals to cease taking pictures or videos. Why? What are you doing here? Ma'am, it's none of your business what I'm doing here. You've been, you've we've escalated the situation. It's you've I'm escalated the situation. They asked me to come out here. You've seen me here you. before. When was that? You're on all these videos. Oh, what videos? All these videos that you post. On oh, so you know who I am? I don't know your name. Oh, okay. I know you're a civilian that reports a lot of law enforcement. And there's a, is there a problem with that? Yeah, Bradley no, International it's, Airport. That's your right yes. To do it. Okay, so but why if are you're we coming at with something? No, wrong. And you're bothering the civilians. You're here. wrong. You're just wrong. About what? I, I'm not trying to be combative with you, but you're just wrong. You're About just flat what? out wrong. You cannot ask me to leave a public I, yeah, place. Yeah, you said I could. You said I could ask you. No, you can. You can ask. Oh, there you go. See? Okay, you can ask. Yeah. So okay. Make sure you know what you're saying first. Okay, you can ask. 
So do you have anything else to ask me? Yeah, I am asking you to leave. Anything else? No. Anything else? I'm asking you to leave. I said no. Anything else? Why? Do you Just have no. Business being here? There is no other. Is there is no other explanation, but besides the word no. What ma'am. is your business being here, ma'am? No. What is your business being here? Not answering any questions that yeah, I don't want to there answer. Is, there needs to be I'm, a reason for you to be in this parking lot. Not line. true. Again, you're you're, you're incorrect. And you're making people feel uncomfortable. You're incorrect, ma'am. I'm no, I'm not, because I've had many civilians come up to me and complain about you. You're incorrect. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that people haven't complained. Exactly. So how am I incorrect? Well, I'll take your body camera, see who complained to you, but. Listen, again, you can ask me to leave. I said no. I don't know what else we need to be discussing at this point. I said no. You know, I... I, I stay here. I know. I can. I know that. I tried to tell you that, Trooper. But you, you didn't want to listen. You wanted to try... She wanted to try and exhort her authority. She didn't want to listen. Mr. Sean was justified in asserting his right to record in a public space educating a trooper who tried to interfere. It's crucial to understand that public property, such as the parking lot of a police headquarters, is owned by the government and accessible to the public, allowing Mr. Sean to remain there. However, tensions rise as Mr. Sean encounters the trooper and Sergeant Fahey, who had assaulted him in 2021. Despite Sergeant Fahey facing no legal consequences for his past actions, the situation becomes increasingly complicated as Mr. Sean approaches the main entrance of the headquarters. Everyone, it's Sergeant Brian Fahey in the flesh. There he is, look at him. In the flesh, he's here. Hi, sir, how are you? Hey, how are you? You already told me you didn't have anything here. Oh yeah, I just gotta do some FOIA requests and things of that nature. A FOIA request? For your body camera footage and Sergeant uh, Brian Fahey's uh, disciplinary record. You can have to send it in, in, in writing. Yeah. Who's the guy behind you that you're holding? I have to conduct, I have to conduct uh, business here, Sergeant. Sir, what can we do for you? Come on in. Oh, we'll you're the Sergeant of pistol, pistol Permits, aren't you? Come on in. Sir. Excuse me, sir. You have to get sir. out of the way. Sir, I know, me, sir, I know your inclination is wanting to assault me, Excuse Sergeant. Me, sir. Stop pushing me. I'm trying to get in. I'm trying you to get in the building. You can't come in the building. You have no business here. I do have business here. Stop acting like a, like a, like a savage. What are you Back doing? Up. Sergeant Fahey is accused of assaulting Mr. Sean for the second time, using excessive force and abusing his power, which constitutes law enforcement misconduct under federal law. His interference with Mr. Sean's entry into the police headquarters violates his First Amendment rights. The Four Analysis Doctrine suggests that certain speech-related activities are allowed in police headquarters, making the obstruction of Mr. Sean's access a rights infringement. Seizing Mr. Sean's phone is also viewed as a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights against unlawful searches and seizures. Another internal affairs complaint on him. This is incredible. Right, exactly, it happened right over here, ladies and gentlemen. Right over here. Right here, right where we're standing. Look at him. You can't control yourself. You're an animal. You're an animal who can't control yourself. You're disgraced to that bad. Um, he, he's going to talk to legal right now. Oh, uh, him. Why are we going to entertain him? He has to formally request it, right? Just witness somebody get assaulted and their property taken from them and not do anything about it, trooper. Is that standard operating procedure? Because there's the criminal right there in front of you. If you'd like to place him under arrest, trooper. He just assaulted me and took my property and violated my First Amendment right. But no, these troopers aren't going to do anything about that, right? In this scenario, we turn to Connecticut's guidelines for police officers using body cameras. These guidelines mandate that once activated during a police interaction, body cameras must remain on until the interaction concludes. They also allow for muting the camera, provided officers explain the reason on camera and in their official report. However, in the case of the officer's interaction with Mr. Sean, which was still ongoing as he attempted to enter the headquarters, muting the body cameras raises concerns. This suggests a need for closer examination of the officer's actions. In broad daylight, man. So there he is. He's so, so mad.
Why are you so mad, Sergeant? I'm not mad. I hope you have a great day. Today. Oh, yeah. After you yeah. assaulted me, right? I didn't assault yes, you. Yes, you did. You did it last time. You did it again. Okay. Because you're scared. You wouldn't do it without a uniform. Because I'm what? You, you're scared. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't do it without that gun on your hip and that badge. You wouldn't do it without that You phone. wouldn't do it. Let's, let's, let's take them all off, right? That's what I thought. So, Trooper, I'm, I'm going to be on my way in a second. I just had a question for you. So you're telling me, I just want to get it for the record, you know, for court documents, just have it memorialized here. You just watched a man assault me and grab my camera, interfering with a constitutionally protected activity. You're a law enforcement officer who took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Are you going to do anything about that? I saw you get in his face as well. So I did see So both you sides. saw me you get. You saw it on body camera? Yeah, the body camera. We'll get you the body can, camera, that's for sure. You can see that you but you were there. stopped him trying to get you from entering. He I'm allowed you, to enter into the building. Told you to get a report, right? He told, he told me to, to submit something in writing. Yes. Yeah, I, but I'm going to have a right to be here. They told you, but I have a right to come in here Is and conduct business. He has as no right to put their hands. He has no right to put his hands on me. You just watched a man. Listen to me. You watched a man. I'm answering your question. Do you want me to answer your question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The only persons that are allowed to come in here is with an appointment, reports and records, and for the pistol, for first time pistol from everybody else, we have to turn away. And what did I, what did I tell you I needed? Records, right? Well, records is not open today. It's only open Tuesday through Thursday. But somehow I spoke to somebody from because legal. Because they legal wanted to talk to you. Okay. Great. So what I'm saying is, how is this not? You saw a man put his hands up. Did I put my hands I on him? I saw a man telling you not to be in the building when you were not allowed to be in the you, building. Did you watch him put his hands on me or not? Did he put his hands on me or People not? People did not tell us that you had anything. Did he to do put his hands on me or not? After and then they let you in. Ma'am, did he put his hands on me or not? Once I saw you do what you did. Once, what did I do? When you physically tried to stop him, open the door. I tried to come inside the building because I'm allowed to, just like I'm inside the building right now. I, I'm and inside the building. Was talking to you. Because they requested you to come so, in. If you didn't have an appointment, I just want to know. Listen, I'm going to be on my way. I'm going to be on my way. The As damage is. I was already contest. assaulted. Did you watch? You watched him assault me. Are you going to do anything about you it? Yes or no? The video. Are you going to do anything about it? In this situation, a police officer failed to intervene when her superior assaulted Mr. Sean. Connecticut's general use of force policy mandates any officer witnessing unreasonable force to intervene, regardless of rank. The officer should have acted when Sergeant Fahey aggressively confronted Mr. Sean blocking his entry and seizing his phone. Almost two weeks after the incident, on June 28, 2023, Mr. Sean lodged a formal complaint against Sergeant Fahey with Internal Affairs. As of the current recording date, Internal Affairs is still investigating. However, according to one of the sergeants within Internal Affairs, regardless of their findings, their office lacks the authority to pursue legal action against Sergeant Fahey. In April 2023, Mr. Xavier, a 24-year-old man, was walking along a sidewalk in Texas when a patrol vehicle pulled up behind him. Unaware of his rights, Mr. Xavier soon found himself illegally detained by an officer who was ignorant of the law, leading to a prolonged and unjust ordeal. The interaction captured on body cam. How's it going, bud? Hey, I'm officer Pacheco with Leander PD. Yeah. 205, I'll be out with you. Are you carrying a firearm right now? Yeah. Okay, how old are you? I'm old enough to carry one. Huh? Old enough to carry one. Okay, yeah, so the response, the, we got a call um, so that there was a young teenager no, at her walking around. No, firing around. So how old are you? Well, old enough to carry one. Okay. Old enough to buy one. Okay, so how about you show me your ID? No, we're good. Okay. 205, I need a second one, step it up, refusing an ID. For what? Because <laughs> the call we got was that it was a teenager, all right? Yo, was out here carrying a siren. I don't know how old you are. Okay. That's the thing. Like, okay. <laughs> well, so, I'm out here on a lawful call, okay? Right, all you right. got to do is ID yourself. If you're 21, then I cut you loose. You're good to go. No. You know how it That's is. That's how it works. Yes, it is. No. It's exactly how it works. I have every right as a law enforcement officer to request ID from anybody open Right, and I can refuse. Okay, then go ahead. Turn around. Okay. Put your hands right back, sir. Okay. Okay. Don't wait for your Why am I being arrested? You know, you're being detained. For what? Because you're refusing to ID, you're refusing to cooperate. I don't need to fight. You're armed with a firearm. You can't detain someone just for carrying a gun. That's but I can, but I contain you, detain you for refusing to ID somebody carrying a uh, firearm. Mr. Xavier's encounter with the officer escalated rapidly, with handcuffs restraining him within a mere minute of their interaction. It became evident that Mr. Xavier's assertion of his constitutional rights triggered the swift detention. 
According to Texas law, police officers must have reasonable suspicion to legally detain an individual based on concrete facts indicating potential illegal activity. Furthermore, officers are allowed a brief detention period of around 20 minutes for investigation, as per a U.S. Supreme Court precedent. In this case, the officer cited a 911 call alleging a person with a gun, prompting the encounter. However, the legality of Mr. Xavier's detention becomes ambiguous as it hinges on whether the officer reasonably assumed him to be underage and potentially carrying a firearm, a point that quickly loses relevance in light of subsequent events. That's not 205, show one detained. Come on. You know what the, the That's exactly says? how the law says. What does it say? The law which says that, hold on. Which, the, which code? Hold on, hold on. You can keep interrupting me or are you gonna? Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, I can request ID anybody, okay, to prove age for anybody open carrying. I don't believe that you're 21, you look younger than 21. Okay, the call that we got was approximately 16 year old. We're out here open carrying, okay? So that's what I'm responding to. Do I look 16? I don't know how old you are because you want to ID yourself. I don't believe you're 21. If you're 21, then that's fine. I'm 21. Okay? Oh, or I'm over 21. So now you will be, t so you're not 21. Huh? So you're 20. No, I'm over 21, I said. You said you will be 20. I'm over, I said over, I promise. Mm -hmm. I'm well over. Okay. I'm, I also don't consent to uh, I'm not searching you. Seizing. Okay. You seized my property. I'm not, I, I unholstered you and I put it that's right here. That's seizing it, okay? took it from me. We can do this all day. Long. And 3802. Okay. You know, so you know 3802. Go ahead. Let me hear. It. What does it say? You go ahead. What is the premise on which I have to, which on which I have to ID? What's that? What's the premise on which I have to ID? If oh. I was arrested, not you're not. You're not arrested. You're being detained, and I, and that, as a peace officer, you're have me you're for I have the right to request ID from you, and to obtain ID from you for anybody that I think might be violating, Texas open law carry. Okay. You refuse an ID yourself. I don't know if you're 21 or not. Right. What's right. your name? Officer Pacheco, right here. Pacheco? Okay. okay, so just relax. I'm just going to pat you down for any other weapons. I'm not going to search you. Okay? Is that Leatherman knife? What? No, I, uh, I don't open it. It might be my wallet. I, I don't know. I'm going to do it again. That might be it felt, be well, it felt like a long, square. Yeah, well, it felt like a, like a long metal piece. It should be square, right? I know. Yeah. As long as it's not a gun. As the encounter progressed, the officer persistently demanded identification from Mr. Xavier, insisting it was a legal requirement. However, Texas law dictates that even in a lawful detention, individuals are not obligated to provide identification. Section 38.02 of the Texas Penal Code specifies that one must only provide identification when lawfully arrested, not merely detained. This crucial legal nuance seemed lost on the officer, highlighting his ignorance of the very laws he was entrusted to uphold. Moreover, the officer's insistence on Mr. Xavier's identification hinted at a potential escalation. Without probable cause or evidence indicating Mr. Xavier's age to be under 21, any attempt to arrest him would constitute yet another unlawful act. In light of Texas's open carry laws, effective since January 1, 2016, citizens are permitted to openly carry handguns without a special license, provided they are holstered. While some opt for a license to carry for added benefits, the basic right remains accessible to most Texans. Despite Mr. Xavier's clear legal standing, the officer persisted in his attempts to escalate the situation, disregarding the evident illegality of Mr. Xavier's detention. I'll give you permission to take it out and check look at my DD now. That you okay, now. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that now, you already put me in the situation. Now, now you want to cooperate. Yeah, because you're unlawfully detaining me. So it's your mag. That's okay. my mag. Uh, check my front pocket. Or on my breast. My breast pocket. Nothing? Your breast You don't have a breast pocket. I, yeah, so you're on the inside. I inside. thought it was in there. Alright, alright. Alright. Check this. Hold on. Because it's right on my idea. You have keys. So now you have no way to ID yourself. Yep. Right? You got no way to ID yourself. You got no way to prove that you're 21. All right. Can I go into this pocket and see what this no. is? Do you have an ID in there? No. You don't have no ID. If it's just, if it feels like keys, it, then it can't. feels like keys no. and it feels like a knife. So that's fine. You can yeah, take it out. I don't take care it. if it's a knife. It's not a knife. Okay. Just, yeah. Turn so around. Sit back. I don't have to ID. This. Okay. Until I've been lawfully arrested, right? You're not. And you're detaining me for not IDing? I'm detaining you. So circumstances change when you're open carrying, right? What's? When you're open carrying right now, okay? Even if I just saw you open carrying, you can't do that. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry. Even if I saw you, no, no, so the law specifically states any peace officer can request identification from anybody who's open carrying, okay, open, 
specifically open carry. And it says, now, yeah. when, I, when I turn the corner, I could clearly see that you're open carry. Okay. So, okay. So that. So so I'm, that, that that's it. Let's okay. Go so one at a time. So if like a 50 year old man who's clearly 50, uh, he, if he was carrying, you can not take his ID. If if I could if I could easily determine that this guy's well over 21, then I, no, every circumstance is different. Okay. Every circumstance is different, but you got to go, I explained to you what the circumstances of the call was, right? Yeah. The circumstances of the call was that there's a teenager. So why would you sell them illegally carrying then? Because if, you're not, cause if, cause if you're not 21, you can't open carry in the state of Texas. So, you can't okay, even own a firearm in the state I'm, of what Texas. What makes you think I'm under the age of 21? Well, be, well you, can, you look under younger 21 uh, to me, and then you, know you also refuse the ID. When was the last time you saw someone so, around 21? We, 20, see, we see people out here all the time, okay? Right. There's, there's no way of knowing who, how, who's, who's old and who's not. But now you're telling me you don't even have ID on you to confirm your age. Right. So, 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 so you're just making the situation even worse. So the officer's misinterpretation of the law became increasingly apparent when he falsely claimed that the rules change when a person is openly carrying a weapon. Citing the relevant section of the Texas government code, the officer erroneously claimed that anyone openly carrying a gun could be forced to show identification. However, this law specifically relates to licensed gun carriers, which Mr. Xavier is not. As already noted, most Texans can carry handguns in public without a special license, confirming that Mr. Xavier was not required to show identification. Moreover, the officer's actions amounted to a blatant violation of Mr. Xavier's Fourth Amendment rights. By detaining him without reasonable suspicion and proceeding to conduct a body search and seizure of his personal weapon, the officer disregarded the fundamental prohibition against unreasonable searches and seizures. The Fourth Amendment requires law enforcement to have a warrant or probable cause before searching a person or their property, neither of which were present in this case. Firm your head. Right. So, 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 so you're just making the situation even worse. What's so you? I saw... Stuart? Yeah, no, she's my supervisor. You can talk to her all day long. Stuart, uh, Nordine. Remember Joshua Nordine? He pulled me over on 183. He searched my... Well, he didn't search my car. He refused and he got the dog. It was probably like two years ago, three years ago. What's your name? Uh, Xavier. Ring the bell? Uh, a while you ago, drive a... Charger. White charger. White? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, uh, I don't know how old is I at the time, would you reckon? Uh, you... Oh, this two years ago. Or something, you know. Well, he refused ID initially. But you know I'm not underage, 16. No. Well, I mean, I... Yeah, I, I'm not saying you should have a... He didn't know that. I know. <laughs> 16, 18, doesn't matter, 21 is right. the age limit, correct? Yep. So you and I both know that. And, and I'm now, 21 or older. Okay, but now you don't have a way to prove it because you don't have an idea on it. I asked you for your idea. I don't so need, you're not I don't me. need to prove it. Okay. You need, you need okay. to find why I'm, I'm, I'm not in your I just explained to you why you have to show me just ID. Just because I look it? You can say that for anyone. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, as a peace officer, if I am suspicious that somebody is unlawfully carrying a firearm, a sidearm, specifically a sidearm, right. not a rifle, not a samurai sword, not a pocket knife, but a sidearm. A second officer, who happened to be the supervisor of the first officer, arrived at the scene, catching Mr. Xavier's attention as someone he had encountered before. Interestingly, the supervisor's presence served to corroborate Mr. Xavier's assertion that he was not underage. With this confirmation, the supervisor effectively dispelled any lingering suspicion the first officer had regarding Mr. Xavier's age. Logically, this should have prompted the release of Mr. Xavier from his unlawful detention by the first officer. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. If I'm suspicious of anybody that may be violating, all right, the age mm -hmm. requirement is just 21, I can request ID to confirm. I'm well within my rights to do that. They don't have to identify. Okay, then, then you get detained until I can confirm who, who your so identity you is. It? Well, how about you start giving me your name and date of birth, and that would help. How is that, how is that not? Because now I can confirm who you are and what your age is. You can just take any, it's Fourth Amendment, Fourth Amendment violation. Yeah, it's not Fourth Amendment. How is it not? Securing my person and papers. Maybe you're... It was a long time ago. God, it was a long time Are you going to help yeah, us out so we can wrap this up? Well, if you tell me you're, you're 21, that's fine. You're wasting my time. I didn't, I didn't bring you in. Okay. It's See, October 5th. It is over 20. 1999. Mr. Xavier, what's your last name? You, that's all you need. October 5th, 1999. Oh, I need a last name. Because if you have an ID... So you're going to run it? If you have, yeah, I'm going to run it, but I can't run it just with first name. I need a last no, name, too. The officer's persistence in detaining Mr. Xavier, even after dispelling suspicion, 
hinted at ulterior motives. Wanting to run Mr. Xavier's ID through the system raised questions about prolonging the ordeal without cause. Despite Mr. Xavier providing his date of birth and first name, the officer demanded his last name, disregarding the Fifth Amendment's protection against self-incrimination. This unnecessary inquiry suggested a violation of Mr. Xavier's rights. Antonio is born in 99. Acosta. Acosta. That's what it is. Okay. You just move it. Yeah. right with you. Walking around? Huh? You just walking around? Yeah. It was too hot this earlier today. Was it, I mean, how did they know that you had it? I don't know. It? Somebody, I, I, didn't, I didn't really. Was your jacket them. open? Uh, or did you have it zipped? Whenever he came by, I think. Yeah, it was open like this. Oh, uh, okay. you had a jacket raised open for your cooking. Oh, it was behind? Yeah, so someone must have seen it. I don't think I ran into it. Yeah. To be fair, you look like you're 16. I get told that sometimes. So... I, I get told I look much older <laughs> other times. No, I have no issue with you, Stuart. I liked you the last time you thought of it. Mm -hmm. Nordin, I don't know why. Nordin doesn't like me. Is he, is he, uh... He's still here. I know, he's a, what's he called? Uh, school resource officer, though, no? Right? Yeah. Perfect. So you understand the importance of, if you're going to open carry, have some idea on you realize that you still have to be able to prove that you're legally able to carry whatever firearm you carry. You realize that, right? Two, two law enforcement officers, two peace officers. It, well, if you I, are questioned, if, if you I'm are not breaking the law, then would, you, were breaking the, you, you were breaking the law, but when it comes to firearms, to specifically sidearms, specifically, okay, specifically sidearms, or uh, rather pistols, excuse me, specifically, any peace officer can question anybody open carrying it. Can you pull up the code for that so I can... I don't, I don't need to pull up the code. Because this is what it says, okay. dude. And it, it, you know, specifically, there is law that says you can't detain people based on the basis of firearms alone. You got this? You got this? Yeah. So, I'm going to load this for you. It's not loaded. You got a mag in there. Yeah, but it's not loaded. It's not chambered. Oh, I got it. I apologize. You want to put it in for me? Well, I, I will read it. Well, if that makes you safe. No. Are you okay with this? I'm gonna give this to you. As soon as I leave, you do whatever you want. Okay? What about the knives? I'm gonna give it to you. Don't you put see. it in the gun? I'm saying, as soon as I leave, you do whatever you want. You want to load it as soon as I take off? Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. I'm gonna give you my card. If you have any questions you want to follow up, just have your name in. Absolutely. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. That'd be great. Give me just a That was in the conversation. My father, my father was working there, and I think I was, I was going that week to Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm not staying there now. Oh, I, I thought you were working at some gun store or something. No, no. Oh, yes. Actually, I, I was going to, but I got a better job. So. That's a call for service number? Okay. So, for this incident, okay? Gotcha. If you want to look it up, you want to contact the PD, you're, that's the number you're going to reference. I'll note everything. Well, everything's on body camera, anyways, but I'll note everything that occurred, okay? All right. Any questions? No. Dude, have some idea on it. It's that you simple. Don't need to. That's okay. the whole point of the Constitution. Okay, that's, that's, Fourth that's, Amendment. That's fine. Okay. Secure my person in favor. We, we, okay, that's fine. That's fine. And in, in the state of Texas, as a Texas peace officer, if I see somebody open carrying a firearm and I have any reason to suspect that they may be unlawfully carrying that firearm, that's sidearm, I can request ID. That I can. Like I, it's, it's reasonable suspicion. It's reasonable, suspicion. It's reasonable right. articulable suspicion. Oh, That's what I just got done explaining to you. Underage. Yeah, and, and the violation was you being underage, not 21. That's what it is. But Stewart said he's probably over 21. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. exactly. That's, okay, that's that's what she okay. got here. That's I don't know I who you are. Right. No, no, no. I, I get that. Do you, you you weren't going to take me under the handcuffs regardless until I told you. Yeah, so I can confirm. Okay, that's okay. Whether it took a minute longer, two minutes longer, whatever. All right. Up to that. Up to that. Up to that point, you were being. Okay. Well, you just say you don't care about it. it, it, it no, of course I do. Of course I do. I care about both. Greek, they, deeply. 
But I also care about people so, respect so. of what the law says. And the law says that as a peace officer, if I suspect anybody who's uh, violating... Only, though? What, specifically, specifically pistol, yeah, because there's specific laws about pistol. You know what they are. You don't know the Texas code? open carry law. What's what, that? What's the penal code so I can look it up? Why don't you look it up? I, I know what the penal code is. I don't, what does it say okay. it directly? All right, we're not going to sit here and have Because you don't know it. We're not, okay. And that's not what it says. Okay, all right. That's you're, okay. You're free, you're free to go and you can look it up while you want, okay? Like, Unless you, you really want me to look it up for you specifically? I would, I would, I appreciate okay. it. Okay, I'll, I'll help you. I'll I don't give Stuart a hard time because <laughs> the way you came up to me was, what was that? And I do apologize because, like I said, I had good interactions with you and I'm not trying to waste your time or anything like that. Is that still there? I think it's in fact. He's off. Gotcha. So where do you work now? I'm gonna count it. You went from all that to an account it? Yeah. God. Okay, you ready? I'm, I'm gonna let you come over here and, and and write it down. You can even record it if you want. <laughs> what does it say? Section 411.205. The law says that if a person with a license to carry handgun, in this particular case, because we're open carry now, so okay, okay, a lot of the verbiage hasn't what caught up it? yet, yeah. but is carrying a handgun and is asked by a peace officer to show ID, they must show both. If somebody has a license okay. to carry, but how does that? Con what, how does that? Well, so because the LTC. So there's still a lot of catching up that the, the, the terminology of LTC and open carry has because like I have an LTC but I don't need it anymore. Right. If you did, if you don't have an LTC, you now do not need it. However, if you are open carrying, right? So now the the, the new law with open carry, you still got to be 21, right? right? So if I request ID, you got to show it to prove that you're 21. Driver's license or other ID. Well then, look, man, you can you can go argue it all you want, okay? I will. I will. That's that's fine. All right, you got any questions? No. That's okay, good. that's it. You're free to go. Have a good night. You too, sir. The officer's actions in real time underscored his lack of understanding of the law. As previously discussed, the law he cited only applies to individuals with a license to carry weapons, which Mr. Xavier clearly did not possess. This further highlighted the officer's misinformation and raised doubts about the legitimacy of his actions.